I'm Bill DeFoy and welcome to It's Just That Simple. My co-host, Michelle Wilson, joins us. And Michelle, good to have you back with us. Thank you for having me back. It's a joy. Well, I tell you what, you've got an interesting topic for us today. So what is the topic du jour? Well, today's topic is about the three top scams that are going on and three simple steps how to avoid being a victim. Now, there's an interesting statistic out there, and I think you have it as well, where there is um, a website, and you could probably cite the website, that tells us that senior citizens are built out of nearly 13 billion, with a B, dollars annually through rip-off schemes. You're right. Actually, it was an, a recent article um, by AARP that brought out the statistic, and actually there was a study done that, you know, unfortunately seniors are a high targeted, and just last year it was billions of dollars lost uh, due to scams. Well, now you mentioned that there are three top rip-offs uh, that are perpetrated on senior citizens, as um, well as three simple solutions. So let's go to problem number one. I say problem number one, you know, we just have predators out there, and there's one called the tech support scheme. And basically what happens, uh, a person will get a phone call and they're saying that they're impersonating themselves as being from Microsoft or some type of technical company. And they're saying that, hey, uh, you have a virus on your computer and that you need, immediately need to go to your computer. They'll give you a website to go to. And what happens, that ex website is actually faked and um, they're actually able to put malware on your computer and steal your private information, your passwords and so forth like that. So that is the... Uh, Number one scheme actually was over billions of dollars last year. It's just Microsoft lost. That is really amazing. I know I just went through getting my computer cleaned up, and I mean, it runs so much better. And there was malware on there, but I think somehow it got, you know, on there through perhaps a website that I was on and it had attached itself to that website. Yes, and actually, that's one simple tip. Is just don't click anywhere you're not familiar with. Even if it's an email you're not familiar with, just don't click that link unless you're really um, sure that it's come from a you know an, a, a, a company that you're very familiar with. All right, so that's number one. What's number two? So the next uh, tip, or actually the next scheme, is actually the IRS uh, scheme, and it's still going on. And actually, I was a victim of that last year. I remember I was at um, one of my networking meetings and my daughter was calling. She was like blowing up my phone, calling me back to back. And I thought there was a real emergency going on. And then when I get her on the phone, she's like, hey, there was someone, you know, left a message saying that they were the IRS and that um, if I didn't call them back right away, that they were going to imprison me or, you know, take me to court because of unpaid IRS taxes. So that is still going along this year. And really the big simple tip, you know, if you pick up the phone, and they say that, just hang it up. Or if they leave a message, just don't call them back. Well, you know, it's interesting you bring that up because I was listening to the radio and we're taping this on the 20th of January, 2016. This was yesterday on the 19th. And the report said the IRS is now ready to accept returns electronically. Up until this point, they have not because they didn't want to undergo this very thing that you're describing that was so rampant last year. Absolutely. And actually, I was a victim that way, too. Um, what happened was I, someone had filed their income taxes before I did. So that's actually another type of scheme out there. And IRS has been hit heavily over the last few years with just fraudulent IRS claims and people perpetrating that they are the IRS. And just one other simple tip is just... If the IRS, they're not going to call you by telephone. They're actually going to send something in the mail. If, if you owe anything or they have any questions, IRS, they do not call uh, call you on the phone. That's another simple tip. To and remember. I've been told this time and time again. Like you said, you're going to get a letter with their contact information and perhaps the address of a local office where you can go in and talk to an agent face to face. Absolutely. And I remember when it occurred to me, I actually um, called my attorney first and then I called my uh, identity theft protection company second just to verify that, you know, this was a scheme, that it wasn't, you know, for real. And I did get that confirmation, too, because you can also contact the IRS, too. And I would say, you know, make sure that it's a valid number, because like I said, you can go on Google and there's so many sites out there thinking you are going to the IRS site or getting your telephone number. You always want to double check. All right. And what's scheme number three? The scheme number three is the new um, debit cards and credit cards are coming out with the chips. 
and the purpose of the chip was that the companies came together because of so much identity theft they created a chip that actually helps you so that you won't be a victim anymore unfortunately the con artists are trying to get around that by actually sending emails to people saying that hey we want to send you your new car but we need to verify your address and your telephone number click here or call us so that's another scheme you know the banks are issuing them they're not all issuing them at the same time however you know consumers are just not aware that one that they're those cars are coming and secondly you know there's imposters out there saying that they need your information before you can send the card so really the simple tip is contact your bank your bank or your credit card company and I would even say if you haven't gotten your card yet why don't you just go ahead and call and ask them to send you one so you can also do that you know one of the things that I have done in the past especially if I've misplaced the card or I've lost the card or believe the card to have been stolen within literally you know minutes I'm on the phone to my local bank to say stop time out we need to regroup here and you know immediately I'm issued a brand new card and nowadays banks I mean if you walk in I know my bank if I walk in and said hey look this is what happened and provide my ID they're going to issue a temporary a card to me right there on the spot and that will be automatically null and void when I activate the replacement card you're absolutely right and actually that happened to me just a couple of weeks ago actually my bank sent me a text saying that we think there was fraudulent you know activity on your account and I didn't test trust the text so I actually called my bank and they said yes and someone was using my card in another country so they were able to shut down my card and they reissued me another card and actually I had the old card so then they sent me the new card and actually they overnight the card to me and I was able to get it and even though I didn't need that the credit card and and bank was only 17% but I was like you know I was going into the weekend and I didn't have access to my credit card unfortunately that's how we access our money now you know or going into the bank so you know you have to really think about that because what happens if that happens and you need access to your money so you just really want to keep an eye on your on your account so something like that was happened to me probably about three or four years ago I had gotten a call from the bank that I was dealing with saying somebody in Buffalo New York was accessing my card while I live in California and I was living in Ventura County working up in the city of Santa Barbara and I'm going really so I went to the local branch and I verified what was being said and they said well that's true and I said well I'm here in person and they said well we've already stopped payment don't worry about it but we have to close down the card and here's a brand new temporary card for you and this was not at a branch that I would normally go into mm -hmm. but it happened to be open and I went in there before work got it taken care of bing bang boom and the the issue the card was reissued you know with a new number and everything so I was like wow I dodged a bullet yeah you know the banks are pretty um, nowadays with identity theft they're very proactive um, as you said and, and know that you know to shut it down they do have security measures unfortunately I always say we can't really protect ourselves against identity theft it's just really what measures you have that when you're going through it how fast you can like you said shut it down or get the help that you need well this bank even went so far as to say in talking to the representative at this branch in Santa Barbara that if you're going to go and travel somewhere whether it be domestically or internationally let the bank know in advance so that they're not going to hold up your card while you're away traveling right you could be using your own card and can't act access it because they think you are you know the, the, the perpetrator. perpetrator right yeah and with the new card what's really great is that you are now able to travel to other countries because the other countries did have these card readers and um, so now you can feel comfortable going into other countries knowing that your card's going to work and like I said if there's any type of um, issues going on you can contact your bank while you're traveling and it's you know for people the, the caveat is if you're going to use a debit card and you're going to access your money at a foreign teller make sure that you're aware that the banks on both sides of the equation are going to charge you a money exchange fee and that can be you start adding that up and it can cost a lot of money absolutely so sometimes you may want to go ahead and just you know I know there's a limit as far as how much cash you know you're traveling but just to go through the, the currency exchange and so forth like that and knowing you know when you're changing your money over that it's you know you can 
who saw the cop that way. I know that that happened to me in Canada, and years ago I had the good fortune of going to Europe a couple of times, and that happened to me there as well. And it's like, oh yeah, huh, I need to remember that and subtract that fee from the uh, amount of available funds so I wouldn't be overdrawn or run up against the zero balance. Right, and even traveling, I would say be very wary of traveling with your debit card, especially if it's accounts that you have, you know, your, your investment, your money, your, your you know, your whole life savings in. You may want to just open up another uh, checking account, you know, with a minimal balance and so forth, or, you know, get a credit card when traveling. That, or a lot of people are now suggesting, Michelle, that you get one of these prepaid debit cards. Yes. That has the Visa or the MasterCard logo and take that because there's a set fee and typically those cards, unless it's otherwise noted into the terms and conditions, you can't refill them once you have done put the initial amount of money on there. Yeah, actually there's two types of cards. There are refillable cards and there are also cards that you like to say one time use, you just put the money on there and then at least you know you can control your losses if something does happen to that card because you only could put a certain amount on there and the, and the fees are very minimal. So a lot of people are using that to even shop online now with the, the prepaid card because it just keeps it uh, separate from their, their banking and so forth because if there is a loss, you know, you just don't want it be a detrimental, you know, when you need to have access to your money. So to recap, let's talk about again the top three um, scams that are out there and review for us the top three solutions. So the simple solutions, or actually the, the scams first, is first the IRS, we talked about that, you know, just people um, calling, pose, posing that they are the uh, IRS calling. Then you have the tech support, you know, companies uh, saying that your computer is uh, has a virus and then there's the credit card scams with the new card rollers and it's really simple you know if you think it if anytime you're getting a phone call from a company i would say hang up the phone simple as that and call your company or call the IRS, call those companies directly do not give any information over the phone and then when it comes to your computer if you're getting emails um, even when you're searching on the computer and you have pop-ups coming up don't click on those links because a lot of times they're just malware that want to get into your uh, computer to steal that information. All right, so I would be remiss if I didn't ask for your contact information and if you'd be so kind to share that for us. Okay, well you can reach me at Michelle Wilson. Uh, my phone number is 805-304-5088 or you can go to my website which is michellewilsoninternational.com. Wonderful. And Michelle, we look forward to seeing you next time and you've been watching It's Just That Simple with Michelle Wilson. I'm Bill DeFoy. This is a production of the Heritage Media Group. <laughs>